If you've been a user of the internet for a decent period of time, you have likely heard of the dark web. The dark web is often associated with illegal activities, such as being used to buy drugs, buy hacked or stolen personal data, and to even hire a hitman. Yeah, it does get pretty dark. But the true purpose of the dark web is privacy. With privacy concerns being at the top of news headlines lately, I felt like now was an opportune time to teach people how to safely access and use the dark web. In this video, I'll cover how to access the dark web, what tools to use, what configurations to set up, and other best practices to keep you safe while browsing. As always, if you do like the video, please do consider hitting that like button and dropping a subscription to our channel. So in order to access the dark web, we need to use a browser called Tor, T-O-R. And you can access that by going to torproject.org. You'll be brought to this website and you can download the Tor browser, but I'm going to advise you not to run this on Windows or Linux or Mac. And we'll talk about why in a second. But Tor browser is a browser built for privacy. You can scroll down here and you can see that it says it blocks trackers, it defends against surveillance, resists fingerprinting, has multi-layered encryption, and you can use Tor Browser to access even popular sites like Facebook, like Google. And you can do this to maintain your privacy. Now, if we take a look at the Tor manual and we scroll down just a little bit, it tells us how Tor actually works. If we scroll down to the how Tor works section, you could see that it sends your traffic through three random servers. These are also known as relays. The last relay is known as the exit relay. So you connect to the Tor network and then you connect to server one, server two, server three, which then takes you out to the internet. So what is the benefit of this? Well, you can see that it says that your internet service provider or anybody looking at your connection will not be able to track your internet activity, including the websites that you go to. On top of this, Tor does not store any browsing history, and your cookies are only valid for a single session, which helps with privacy. But it should be known that your ISP or your internet service provider can tell that you are using a Tor connection. So before you use Tor, please make sure that it is legal in your country. Now earlier I mentioned that you should not run Tor on Windows or Mac or Linux, and you probably thought, what is he talking about? Well, you should run Tor through an operating system that is designed for privacy. And a great operating system that is designed for privacy is called Tails. You can access Tails by going to tails.boum.org. Now, the nice thing about Tails is that you download it to a flash drive. As such, you plug it in and you run that as your operating system. How Tails works is it operates with random access memory. This means that it does not write to disk, it does not store anything, and thus you're able to use your flash drive's memory to access the internet, to temporarily download files, to browse anonymously, and none of that is tracked or stored. When we use an operating system, especially an operating system like Windows, Data is being sent back to Microsoft all the time. And when we go to a website, even using Tor on Windows, well, if we download anything or if we view anything, that can be stored on our disk, on our drive. And if anybody were ever to get a hold of that, they may be able to tell what we were doing when we were browsing Tor. And I'm not saying this from a standpoint of condoning illegal activity, I'm saying this in the sense that if you were wanting to protect your privacy completely, using Tails and Tor together is the best way to go. Using Tails is very easy. You can come in here and just say get Tails. And you can see the operating systems here that it offers. Please, again, only download this to a USB stick. You can come and select download only for USB stick. And you can download this image. And it will tell you how to run and install Tails on a USB stick. And if you're running from Windows or Mac or Linux, it'll tell you the step-by-step -step instructions. We're not going to cover that in this video, but please run this only on a USB stick. Now, the great thing about Tails is it uses Tor as its main browser. 
As you can see here, I have now loaded Tails, and I am doing a big no-no, and this is only for demonstration purposes. I'm actually running Tails in a virtual machine. Many people ask, can I run Tails in a virtual machine? No, because that virtual machine is still being stored to a disk. Thus, anything that you do within Tails may still be recoverable on that disk. So again, it is imperative to only use Tails on a USB drive. Now, in this situation, I have connected to the internet by plugging in an Ethernet cable, and you can see that up here. You can also go up here and choose a wireless connection if you do not have a wired connection. Connect there, and once you are connected to the internet, you can see here that a Tor connection screen will pop up. What you're going to want to do is just say connect to Tor automatically, and then you're just going to say connect to Tor. This could take a minute to get connected to Tor, and once it is ready to go, it will let you know. From this screen, we can just go ahead and hit Start Tor Browser. From here, Tor Browser is loaded. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen. Now, some privacy people will say, never full screen your browser window, because you may go to a website that can detect what screen size you're using, and that information could be used against you. I think that that risk is incredibly minimal, and I'm not worried about it as much as I am other configurations. However, if you wanted to play it safe, you could just minimize this and come in here and drag a screen size to what you want it to be. But I always run Tails in full screen. I think that's one of those risks that I can just accept. Now, the most important thing before you start navigating is this little shield in the upper corner right here. What you're going to want to do is set your security level. So your security level will be standard and come in here and you should say change. Now it describes the three security levels for you. It'll say standard, safer, or safest. We are always going to want to run on safest. This is because it will automatically disable JavaScript. Very important. There's other safety features here that are listed, but the JavaScript disabling is very important because you could navigate to a website that is malicious and has malicious intent. And if JavaScript is enabled, then they may be able to hack into your machine just by you navigating to a website. So if you are ever browsing Tor and you are asked to enable JavaScript for any reason, do not do it. On a side note, if you are running Tails, every time that you boot up Tails and you load Tor, you will need to go into safest mode. It defaults to standard. You can save those changes and re-image, but the easiest way is to just boot fresh every time and come in here and choose safest mode. With that out of the way, you see that we are brought to the Tails screen. The current release is 5.1.1. Please always update as a best practice anytime a new Tails is out. And you do not have to worry about this, by the way. When you plug in your thumb drive and you boot up Tails and you connect to the internet, if it is out of date, Tails will tell you. It'll say, hey, please update your flash drive. Easy enough. Always keep your flash drive up to date. You never know what security vulnerabilities are available and can be abused in the older versions of the operating system. Now, by default, Tor uses the DuckDuckGo search engine. So if we wanted to come in here and search pasta recipes, as an example, we could, and it would automatically start searching DuckDuckGo. Now you can see that we're being redirected to the non-JavaScript site. That's perfect. We want to make sure that we are not using JavaScript. So when we see that, we know we're doing the right thing. Now we can go to websites like this allrecipes.com. We can just open this in a new tab. And you might notice that this is slow, by the way. Remember, we are going through three relays. The internet on Tor is a bit slower, but the trade-off is your privacy. And if we go to this website, it's loading slowly. Not everything's probably going to load because we have JavaScript disabled and we're disabling some fonts and features as well. But we can still browse what is called the clearnet. Anything that's like a .com, .org, anything we've typically seen before is what is known as the clearnet. Now, whenever we want to access a dark web website, we need to use what is called a .onion address. And you might be asking, well, how do I know what .onion to go to? Well, there's a few things that we can do. We can search DuckDuckGo for specific websites or .onions that we want to use, but there are also search engines built specifically for 
Tor. One of those search engines is AHMIA, A-H-M-I-A dot F-I. And when we go to this, it'll say, try the Onion servers. There's more private and secure connections using their Onion. You could see the Onion address here and the Onion address here. So you can actually click on this and it should take you to AMIA's Onion address as opposed to using the .fi clearnet. So now we are on a more secure option. So again, if we're browsing the clearnet, it is very much less secure and less private. We want to make sure we're browsing a .onion. Now from here, we can search for certain services or features. Let's say we wanted to use Facebook. We could just type in Facebook. And the first link that's provided to us is Facebook. So if we come in here, we'll get redirected. And you'll see we're brought to the Facebook page on the dark web. Now, you need to make very, very sure that you are really on the Facebook page. Somebody could come in here and create a very similar jumbled address that starts with Facebook, and you will give them your information, your username and password. And I'm only using Facebook as an example here. I am not a Facebook advocate. I think Facebook's privacy rules and standards are subpar. And I know that the majority of the world uses it, so this is a great example. But if you are concerned with privacy, Facebook is something to consider getting rid of as well. So we might want to make sure that we know what Facebook's Onion address is. And we can go to DuckDuckGo and we can just say something like, what is Facebook's Onion address? Search that and it should pop up with the actual answer. So we can always source that. And we can come in here and it looks like Wikipedia has the answer for us. And you can see that we have this jumbled address right here. So we can copy this and go to this and be for sure that we're actually going to the right address. Okay, and it looks like we we did. So that's a good thing. So going back to AMIA, we can search things again, like pasta recipes. But this time, we're going to only get dot onion addresses, which means that we're going to only search via the dark web. And that's important. Again, that keeps us safe and private. Now, the dark web can be a bit of a cluster. If you scroll down here, you can see that, hey, buy drugs. So you need to make sure that you're clicking on things that you know are safe and you're very cautious. And this is why we disable things like JavaScript, because we don't know if we click on this pasta website, what we're going to get. And it looks like it's some sort of file uploader. So that's interesting. Not a pasta recipe at all. So one last thing to talk about, if you ever download a file from the dark web, ensure that you disconnect from the internet before opening it, always. When you download a file, you can come into your places and go to Tor Browser. Your file will be in this folder. Nothing will ever save here. As soon as you pull the flash drive out of your computer or you shut this down, you lose all the files that are saved here. Never open a file that you downloaded from the dark web while connected to the internet. You have no idea what's going to be in that file and what's going to execute. If you want to save a file that you downloaded from the dark web, you will need to have an external hard drive that you plug in and connect to this machine and then you can move that over. It is highly recommended that you encrypt that hard drive. I would strongly recommend using a tool such as Veracrypt and if you go into Applications and Utilities, you could see that Unlock Veracrypt Drives is here. So you can use a tool like Veracrypt to encrypt your hard drive. Then you can plug it in in Tails, unlock it, move your file over while disconnected from the internet, and then you can extract that hard drive and save that file permanently. Otherwise, again, everything that you put in here will automatically be erased. And that's the beauty and the benefit of using Tails as soon as you shut down Tails or even pull the flash drive out of your computer. So that is it for this video. Hopefully that is informative for you. Hopefully you can now browse safely. Just a few tips and tricks go a very long way. You need to be cautious if you are going to use the dark web for privacy purposes. Understand again that your ISP will be able to see that you're using Tor. It is not illegal in every country, though it is illegal in some countries. You need to make sure that you are Disabling JavaScript and running in the safest settings when you do use the Tor browser. Highly recommend using Tails on a flash drive and nothing else. Never open files that you download from the internet while connected to the internet. 
And if you're going to save files that you download, please put them on a external hard drive that is encrypted with Veracrypt with a very, very secure password. So that is it for this video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. As always, if you like the video, please do hit the subscribe button and please do smash that like button. Until next time, my name is The Cyber Mentor and I thank you for joining me.